Thank you. Uh, so first, I really want to thank the organizers and the administ administrative staff of the IMS for making this uh, program uh, possible. I've had the uh, opportunity to be here for the whole program, and I've enjoyed uh, plentiful and superb talks. Um, so, uh, so my talk is based on a joint work with, with Matty, my advisor, and AJ, and Cody. Uh, so it's, uh, it's truly a joint work, and it's been, I don't know if anybody's worked with any of these people, but they are speedsters, got a Formula One racing. Uh, if anybody saw Formula One in Singapore, I, I didn't, but um, that's so, and when I, when I be talking here about hidden Markov uh, model, um, I use this interchangeably with state space, state space model, if you're more familiar with that term. Um, so going uh, stateless, uh, if for nothing else, it adds some personality to the title, I suppose. Okay. So here is the, basically our setting. So we have a underlying diffusion. Um, sorry, it's a hidden, it's, it's what we are interested in doing diffusion uh, inference on. And we have, so a drift and a diffusion uh, term and uh, observations are given by a process y and uh, with density given here. And we assume that, um, that we make the practical assumption that the observations are obtained at discrete points in time. And so we use a relabeling and without loss of generality, we can assume that the observations are given uh, on, the, on the integers um, from zero to n. So there's, been, there's definitely been a lot of uh, the work on, on these types of models. So this is, of course, the standard. This is the, in a stochastic analysis course, is the first, this is the basic process that we consider, these Edo diffusions. Um, and they have, they're widely applied in, in science and engineering and finance. And if we have linear Gaussian uh, dynamics and observations, then we, they, we know that, that this is uh, given, the solution is given by the Kalman filter recursions. And if you also have um, some linearity or Gaussianity in only one of these processes, then there are, there are also uh, available methods for that. And so we're interested here where we don't, we don't assume that we, uh, that we, have, um, that we ha have much linearity or Gaussianity available. So um, it's very, really nonlinear observations and, and uh, dynamics that cannot be simulated. So we're interested here in joint inference over the Bayesian joint posterior. So we fix a prior on the model parameters and, um, and we have a latent probability, which I'm writing here everything in densities for the sake of presentation, though we should keep in mind that these densities don't exist or are not, are not obtain, uh, obtainable. And uh, so, so this latent probability by Bayes' formula, one can show it's given by the following. So here I am writing uh, GP, so uh, for this observational density. And then the dynamics between the, the points, between the observation points and times um, are given by this Markov transition <coughs> kernel. And we're, we're now interested in the problem of joint uh, inference over theta and x. So in this talk, um, basically, we're, we're interested in multiple things. So we, we would like the method to be unbiased. So this is, um, there's, been some, there's been a lot of work, actually, uh, in, the, so in the, the realm of exact simulation. So, so these, these methods by Besco, Garrett, Papos, Peliopoulos, um, so they, uh, they're, they are, they're very, um, they're very, so very sophisticated methods. They require those some conditions on the diffusion as well as tailored solutions. And so we would like to kind of extend uh, the applicability of, 
of these types of exact, uh, as we talked about, exact inference methods. And we'd also like the, the method to be efficient. So um, this can be challenging when, um, when n, so the time horizon may be large and x may be high dimensional. And we'd also like the method to be user friendly. So a practitioner um, can easily implement the method without requiring much um, so analysis by hand or tailored solutions. And um, so the, the approach of this paper, which I have the opportunity to present, is based basically on, I would say, three components. So we, we use the well-studied and simple, the Euler approximations. And then we use what I'm referring to as the debiased MLMC techniques of McLeish, Rieglin and then an IS type correction of approximate MCMC. So I'll introduce these in turn. So everyone here I'm sure is familiar with Euler approximation. So this defines a new hidden Markov chain with uh, here I'm using a disc discretization size given here and, and then we obtain this Markov chain with associated Markov tra transition associated to the level L. Okay, I think I lost the power on the pointer. Um, so, and then we have the, this induces then a latent probability on uh, latent states. And so as is well known and is quite popular, one can then use the PMMH to do joint, so approximate inference. And there are uh, dozens, uh, many dozens of papers and applications that use this method. So that will give an approximate uh, joint inference over model parameters and states. And I'd like to mention there's also a paper by uh, Cody, um, so, uh, so AJ, Kengo, Cody, and John, and um, which uses a multi-level technique for a similar same problem, but it's also biased. Okay, now I actually have a problem because <laughs> this whole thing's dead, so I have to scroll by hand. Okay, um, let's see, so the, okay, so the next part that I'd like to introduce is the, so the multi-level Monte Carlo, which goes back in a simpler setting to, based on telescoping, some ideas of uh, Heinrich and Giles. So, so here we, uh, we consider, so a function um, phi. So we're only interested right now on the, so on the problem of, late, of, of the latent state inference. And so we are interested then in, the, uh, in, in approximating this increment where, where here the, the novelty is that we, we are only interested in the unnormalized version. So this PU is, the unnormalized latent probability. And, uh, and, the, and it's based on using the uh, coupling, what's called the, uh, the approximate coupling by the authors, so by AJ, uh, Kingo, uh, uh, Cody, and John. So in their paper, Bayesian Static Parameter Estimation, they use this coupling approach. It's, it's at the, uh, the Feynman-Katz model level. So we use, um, we have M check which is given um, as a coupling between the two levels, L. And, uh, and also we have a, a joint potential. And, and uh, so, so this coupling, it seems to be very uh, effective and um, and, and, we will, and we use it to, to estimate unbiasedly this unnormalized uh, increment. So, so now that's, so basically we have this, we, have, we define this new, uh, this new model in terms of transition and potential. And then we feed it into the standard particle filter algorithm, which we recall um, is given as, can be given as follows. So if, thank you. So, so if, if you've never implemented this algorithm, uh, then it won't make much sense, but once you've implemented it, I, I th it becomes much, much clearer. So, 
Um, the important part is the, the output. So it outputs a, a set of trajectories which can be retraced from this uh, sum of, of, of uh, finite transitions and, and then and a set of weights. And it provides then an unbiased estimate for the likelihood and for um, this expectation over the unnormalized uh, latent po probability. And so now let's get back to what I was, it was talking about this, uh, what we call the delta particle filter for the unbiased um, estimation of the unnormalized increments. So we run the PF on this new, this coupled feynman cotts model. And then we, so we obtain these, these states here, these X, this X check. So you recall that they are given on this, this binary space. Um, so it has basically two to the N plus two components. If you, if you look at from zero to, zero to N. And, and then we output this, um, we form this estimate here. And in given to, in terms of this um, re-rating, so we have the, this, this weight which, which important samples up to the fine level, uh, unnormalized latent probability, and we also have this, this weight which important samples down to the, the lower level. And uh, so here's L and L minus one. So, so once, if you do then the, if you take the expectation with respect to this estimator, you obtain, um, so you'll notice, so if you write out the law of the feynman katz model, take the expectation, then these, so these cancel. And so you're just left with the L level here. And then you're left with this uh, coupled transition. And if, you, if we integrate out um, over the L minus one level, we're left with just the L transition. So we end up with this. And the same is the case for the L uh, minus one level. So we are able to estimate unbiasedly this increment. So now the, the, the next ingredient that we need is uh, the debiased MLMC or randomized MLMC. So this goes back to a paper by McLeish and uh, Reed and Glynn in uh, 2012 and 2015. And there's a really nice paper by Matti, which basically shows that the, so the deterministic MLMC can be viewed as a stratified version of, of the debiased MLMC. Um, and so the, there, in this paper, Reed and Glenn, there are three different estimators that are given, uh, C, V, Hola, or more. And so the one that we use here is the single-term debiased MLMC estimator. And it's, there's a reason for, for that. Maybe I'll get to that later. But it basically scales uh, in the correct way uh, in terms of computational complexity. Um, so, we, we are in, so you recall this is the delta particle filter estimator. And now we, we randomize this by, now L is going to be a random variable, and then we, there's a reweighting factor here. So in more detail, we, we need that the probability takes, uh, has positive density on all the positive integers. And uh, then we, we draw L from that probability. And so in, in our context, we only need that the variance of of this uh, randomized delta particle filter, so it's finite. And under this assumption, so this estimator, then it targets the, this, uh, by, it's a telescoping sum idea, uh, but in the Debias case, and it actually targets this increment from the, the zero off level to the infinite level, so that's the continuum uh, dynamics that, we're, that we were originally interested in. So this implies then that we can target this ideal latent probability um, by using the, ran the debias uh, delta particle filter plus the, a simple 
uh, particle filter run at the zeroth level. So you'll recall the notation uh, for the output of this, this algorithm. And uh, so this is, this is nice. And we can use that then um, to obtain unbiased latent inference by, by just using uh, a ratio estimator. And, but recall that we're actually interested in the joint inference. So where it's given like, like here. So we can't use this within, for example, the PMMH because this, this estimator here, it, takes, it can take negative values, for example. So you recall that there's, there's a minus, there's, there can, there can, there's negative weights. Uh, so we can't use that directly within the particle marginal metropolis Hastings. But so in a paper uh, in 2016, so there's, we can actually use an IS type correction so the weights can be uh, positive or negative. <clears throat> and and we, so we use that as, as, as follows. So F is now a function on the joint space. And epsilon is a constant greater than or equal to zero. So it's, it's arbitrary. And if it's simpler, uh, you can just take epsilon to be zero. Um, so the first phase, we run a PMMH targeting a coarse level, so the zeroth level. So it's a standard uh, PMMH um, with proposal as, with, as your choice. And, uh, then, so the nice, and then we do uh, so an important sampling correction. So the nice thing about the first, the first phase is that so being it's it's targeting like a coarse level, so it's very inexpensive, expense, inexpensive to simulate. Um, so it's targeting the coarse level, and uh, also for example, uh, burn-in is is easy. It's it's inexpensive to to uh, to run the burn-in because we don't need to calculate these expensive uh, delta, randomized delta part of fi filters in the second phase. So now if we go to the second phase, we, we, have, we have generated this chain already. And now if we, can run, we can run these particle filters um, in parallel to generate these randomized particle filters. So that can be used very efficiently with parallel and distributed computing. And um, then we form this, this estimator, which is given by, by this, 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 these, weighted, these weights here. And if we, chose, if, if we chose epsilon greater than zero, so positive, then we're guaranteed um, consistency. And so the issue of the positivity of epsilon, um, so we, we recommend taking it it, probably so small. So basically, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how large it is because you important sample to the correct distribution. And taking epsilon, it also it kind of, it basically flattens out the, the, your, your target uh, at the, zeroth, the target distribution at zeroth level between the, the, the zeroth level posterior and the prior. So it might also have some, some it might also help with the mixing if you assume kind of a diffuse prior. So, so this is the, the IS algorithm in its entirety. And uh, so, so the, key, the key point is that we, we, need, we need that this, this expectation over the, over the prior of, of this randomized um, delta particle filter so that that, that is fi uh, finite and that will, um, be very important. So, so, so essentially, uh, if we, if we can bound this, so taking if you take the expectation of, if you take the expectation with theta uh, fixed of this random this debiased MLMC, then you obtain um, this. So this is expectation squared, and. So we need basically we need to show so remember, recall that we can choose we can choose the the probability on the integers p sub l. 
And so, but we can't, we can't control, uh, so this, this uh, squared expectation. So we need, uh, we need some information about the decay of the delta particle filter. Um, so, so basically, we have this result, and so it's, uh, it's a pity that AJ is not here. So, so he worked uh, digitally on this problem. So, so we, have these, we have these conditions. So these are basically the standard conditions on the diffusion. So as, uh, on any standard reference like Clodin and Platten. Uh, so we have ellipticity, we have Lipschitz, and we have bounded uh, initial moments. And, and also on the hidden Markov model, or the feynman katz model, we, we assume the, the normal conditions, as in Del Morel, so upper and lower bounded potentials, Lipschitz potentials, and dynamics. And um, so, we, so we have a function then phi on the latents, and we, we assume that's bounded and Lipschitz. And uh, then we have this result on the variance decay as a function of level. So we're here, beta is taken to be one if it's the, an order approximation or beta is equal to for a Milstein approximation. So this then implies that we have this bound for the squared expectation by Cauchy-Schwarz. Um, so this is a very nice result that, that you would want in this, this context. So, now let's get back to the Debias MLMC and, and optimal allocations considerations. So, <clears throat> so basically uh, the approach we use, uh, so we have this nice decay in the, in, in the squared expectation. And if we chose, basically if you choose the, the, this probability to be heavy tailed enough, then you guarantee that the variance is finite. The problem is that if this is a very heavy tailed Probability, then you might have to you might have to run. Uh, it, it will exhaust basically your computational resources. You might have to run too many very expensive uh, path simulations for the, the Brownian motion. So, so we can't. It's not that simple. We we need to kind of fit this into a computational complexity uh, limitation framework. So we follow the the route of, so the early work of Glynn and Witt, and in particular, Re and Glynn. So the cost to run this, this algorithm, so we, uh, we can write as, as, as this sum. So, so, so we assume that these, that these costs at each iteration of the chain, so they are, positive valued random variables. They're conditionally independent uh, given the theta k. And, and they satisfy for some constant uh, this, this, um, this bound. And so I'm just giving some um, an idea of, of what we can say about the proper allocation. So in the case of uh, Milstein, for example, we, you can actually, you don't need to scale the particles at, at each level. So we can just have it particle number constant. And, um, and then you scale the probability with um, like two to the minus L. So in the standard, um, so this, this implies then the root M convergence rate. So the standard a typical 1D Milstein setting you have, so you have beta equals, beta equals two and gamma equals one. So then you have piece of L, uh, you can choose piece of L to be two to the minus three halves for the L. And so if you, if you recall, we had, we had this bound. So basically, So basically, we only need to, so since this, this, this term is, is dominated by, uh, actually, so both, both are 2 to the minus 2. So minus 
two, and then we we have uh, this term. So then we're, we end up with um, so two to the minus one half to the l. So that's summable. So then this, this ensures that the so the expected uh, so the this is, this ensures that the variance so the variance so the squared expectation then is finite. Uh, so it's more complicated when you have only beta equals one. So then you have you have infinite. Uh, you have to choose between infinite variance or uh, and finite expected costs or the reverse. So so we choose finite um, asymptotic variance. And uh, so this case is actually quite is interesting. So there are um, multiple choices. Um, that you can choose, so so actually an interval, and so this this seems to be new. We haven't found uh, this result anywhere else, and so and it, so choosing if you choose these values, so it actually leads to computational complexity, which is of this order, so where delta is greater than zero is arbitrary. So this is the standard Debye's MLMC complexity, and. So if delta is equal to zero, it's actually the deterministic MLMC. So it's so this is this is negligibly uh, worse than the deterministic MLMC, but it uh, leads to bi uh, to unbiased inference. So it's the standard uh, it's the standard thing. So it's has uh, just just about the same computational complexity as the standard MLMC, but it's unbiased has the added benefit of being unbiased. So for example, you can choose, you can also can choose the particle number to be constant, and you have this decay. Um, so, so, we, so we wanted this paper just to be a proof of concept, basically, that this problem, uh, that, that this, this algorithm uh, is, is can be used to obtain unbiased inference for hidden Markov model diffusions, and so we dealt, we've we've done some simulation with some uh, toy models, so Ornstein Ulenbeck process, and so if you look at the the decay of the mean square error, then you would you would like this to decay like one over cost, and you see in the Milstein case you have you have good confirmation um, with theory, so in practice and in the so in the drift alternating uh, geometric Brownian motion case, so here you have a you have this um, this term this non-constant diffusion term here. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be <coughs> more it could be more involved. So basically, so Euler does not e equal Milstein. So if you take uh, the derivative. Here it's going to be non-zero. So, and then we, we run. We we suppose that we can't do Milstein, and we run an Euler uh, approximation. And so then with the Euler, so as I so as as, we, as as I showed, so you don't obtain the the canonical convergence rate. So you have a basically a logarithmic penalty. So you see here that so you have a, a slow uh, drift. So this logarithmic penalty. And so it also agrees with the theory. So now I'd like to basically conclude. Um, so, so I introduced this this IS algorithm for hidden Markov model diffusions. Um, so it's broadly applicable and only relies on Euler type approximations. Uh, it can provide some unbiased, asymptotically exact. Inference. So there are. So we've worked it out. Um, so on certain. So quite um, standard hypotheses uh, that you're guaranteed consistency. And um, so it's quite efficient. It achieves the biased MLMC complexity. But now we're. But we're actually in a more uh, involved uh, joint inference setting. And it's. Extremely parallelizable, so the phase two correction you can do independently. 
So, so some of those, uh, some of the phase two corrections, they may take a lot of time because you're running debiased MLM, ML, MLMC. And if you choose basically a level that is quite large, uh, so that particular, that particular delta particle filter, it will take a long time to run. But the nice thing is you're running all the other particle filter, uh, delta particle filters at the same time, depending on how much parallelization you have. Um, so basically, you're looking at the maximum instead of the sum of the, the times to run the particle the delta particle filter. Uh, you also can run uh, you also can run the delta particle filters for only distinct values. So if you have if you're in your base PMMH, if you have repeated values, then you can run what's called the jump chain, and you only run uh, you only simulate a delta particle filter for each. Uh, for each different value of the base PMMH chain. And I also mentioned the burn-in. So there are also there are other uh, IS efficiency enhancements and, um, and nice, uh, nice features of IS that you can, that you can use. So I referred, I referred to the 2016 paper. And so it's also straight, straightforward and easy to implement. So you have to know how to do the, an order approximation, and you, know, you need to implement the particle filter. Uh, you need to do the, the, the coupling business in the MLMC in terms of Brownian paths. And, and then you, just, you tie that in with an IS correction. So, so, uh, so each of those, those parts is relatively straightforward in itself, and you just combine them. Um, so we, don't, we don't require tailored solutions. <coughs> so it's, it's, a, it's a quite general method, but we can't say uh, in full generality whether we have guaranteed consistency, because that depends on these conditions on the control of the variance of the particle filter. So, um, now I'll just give a few ideas that uh, for future investigations. So we are currently looking into extension to levy-driven uh, jump diffusion models. So these these models are are quite uh, popular and in, in, uh, in practice, and um, we think uh, everything should should carry over and it should might be interesting. So this is um, so a lot of a lot of the context uh, is uh, is available uh, and should be available uh, should be able to be used in this joint uh, setting. So with AJ Cody and uh, Prince Ose, and um, so the other thing you can do is you can use something besides the basic PMMH. So there's a lot of work being done on on basically well. As, so as Kengo's talk, you can use. You can use uh, you can use more sophisticated uh, proposals. You can use um, Hamiltonian Langevin non-diversible type samplers. You can use other approximate chains, and um, so that that might be interesting. And so this this debiasing technique of Reen Glenn. So it's uh, it's a very it's a very general uh, technique, and if we use that with based on the IS debiasing technique that we use in the paper, so we believe that um, so it'll be it, it could be effective in other settings besides the current diffusion context. Um, <coughs> so an issue with with debias MLMC is if you have limited computational cost, you can't. You don't want to basically overburden uh, your machine, your computer, if you don't have if you don't have so much memory or you don't have so much physical memory. And so there needs to be more work done in this area, and also considering the tail behavior. So not only expect, bound on the expected cost, but also some information about the tail behavior and what what uh, you can handle on the probability. Um, and uh, so we show the, 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 the bound on the variance for the delta particle filter. And there are, there are also lots of other stability as aspects that you can consider. 
for the delta particle filter, and then you can relate that to this to this IS setting, this IS algorithm, which uh, so where it's naturally used, and um, so there's there's definitely a lot of work that should be done on comparing the benefit of using a uh, the, uh, the bias, uh, biasing technique with existing algorithms, which can be quite fast. So whether whether using the PBMH, the, 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 the algorithm and static Bayesian pr uh, parameter estimation, or using um, approximate methods or non-parametric methods like uh, Gaussian uh, process regression. So, so there's so we so we like the idea of of really targeting the model that you're that you're in and, and doing un, really so inference in that model, but there are uh, there are definitely a lot of other uh, algorithms which may be biased but may be computationally efficient. So it's definitely interesting to do a comparison uh, how much you gain by debiasing and and, you, and how much you lose, um, but. But all in all, um, so we are we are quite um, hopeful for for this this algorithm, and uh, we believe it's so a step forward for unbiased inference uh, for diffusions. So now I'll show you a short literature list uh, where you can get started if you're interested, and uh, I'll open the floor for questions. Okay, so this this is the so this black okay, the red one is the mean squared error. So basically, we ran a hundred different um, we, we ran a hundred different independent uh, chains, and then at each at each iteration time, we looked at the mean squared error from so the mean squared error we just use. So if this is the iteration time, and we have so 100 independent chains, so 100 replications. So we just use the standard average. So if we have we have our estimator is, and we have the replicate i, and if we look at so we, we know, and so in, the, in these contexts, we can compute exactly what this expectation is. So, so we look at, we look at, this is what we call the mean squared error, so, and then we, we want this to, to scale, so how I have this, this graph here, we would like the, there's a number of, iter so there's a number of iterations increases, basically you have so you would like the, this decay to, so somehow uh, be like, um, so, some, so something like um, over the number of, so in the standard type of Monte Carlo, you have something like, like this. And so if M, so if the cost, so if M and the cost are, uh, related, then you would like the MSC to to decay uh, like like that. So so basically, so this is showing that you have the standard. So this is the this is if you have the canonical type of convergence, right? So this is this is just showing that. And here you have basically you have um, it's not exactly uh, what you would want because it's in this borderline regime. 